LSU would have to overcome tremendous conflict in college football in order to get to where they are today. And it's the tale of two transfers, starting with Joe Burrow. For people who are just now getting familiar with him, I can tell you that this isn't a fluke. Back when he was on Ohio State, the players were already raving about him. They knew how special he could be. This is a tweet from Ohio State alum and running back Mike Weber making a Tom Brady comparison about Burrow back in 2017. And when people talk about Joe losing the starting job at Ohio State, I can tell you it isn't because they didn't want him. And it wasn't simply because they thought Dwayne Haskins was better. He lost it because he got hurt and Dwayne Haskins did so well stepping in for JT Barrett when he went down during the Michigan game that Urban Meyer's decision was made for him. And his performance last year wasn't so much an impression on who he was as a player as it was one, LSU's offensive philosophy at the time, and two, his lack of time in the LSU program. Because it takes time for quarterbacks to gain a rapport with their teammates and he transferred into LSU on May 20th, meaning he missed the entirety of spring training which is critical when it comes to players developing chemistry with their teammates. So I'd say that the player that Joe Burrow is today is the player that he was trending toward being all along. But also, had LSU not brought in offense coordinator Joe Brady, we would have never gotten to see Joe Burrow at his best. Because Brady brought with them a New Orleans Saints style offensive playbook, which was also a play style similar to what Joe played with both in high school and at Ohio State. And that's why you see such a stark contrast in his numbers this year compared to last year. But for a more full picture of the improvements that the team made as a whole from last year to this year. Last year they ranked 69th in yards per game and 38th in points per game as opposed to this year where they ranked first in yards per game and third in points per game. And while their defense is down statistically from last year, they're still a supremely talented group with NFL players at every level and they're peaking at the right time. And they're up against Oklahoma who's led by Jalen Hurts and he said it himself during the Heisman ceremony, his journey has been like any other player in college football history. First of all, as a true freshman, he led Alabama to a national title game, which they lost in a very close matchup to Clemson, 35-31. In his sophomore year, after leading the Crimson Tide to another national title game, he was benched at halftime and had to watch his Tua Tagovailoa led the Tide to a comeback victory for the national title. Then the following year, after Tua was injured in the SEC championship game, Hurts led Alabama to a comeback victory, securing their perfect season and a playoff spot. But now he's at Oklahoma and he's following in the legacies of back-to-back -back Heisman winners and number one picks in Baker Mayfield and Kyler Murray, and he's up against this year's Heisman winner and likely number one pick, Joe Burrow. But if you look at his numbers statistically, this season, while he's not quite the passer that Mayfield or Murray were, his rushing numbers start to level things out. And the team statistically has also managed to maintain the Oklahoma standard of offense as they compare favorably to the previous two years. Although of note, the offense had to adapt to each of its quarterbacks' play styles. And Hurts brings more of a power run aspect to the game when compared to the other two. But still, with him at quarterback, they get the job done. And they're partnered with a much improved defense under defensive coordinator Alex Grinch, as they improved from 114th in yards per game and 102nd in points per game to 25th overall in yards per game and 50th overall in points per game. But it's still not quite as good as LSU's defense, which ranks 32nd in yards per game and 25th in points per game. And this is considered an off year for LSU. But Oklahoma has been to these college football playoffs before. And this was the score when they played Georgia, who was the sixth ranked total defense, who allowed 294.9 yards per game and was sixth in scoring defense with 16. 16.4 points allowed per game, and this was the score when they played Alabama, who was 16th in total defense with 320 yards and 12th in scoring defense with 18.1 points per game. Because this Oklahoma team under Leak and Riley has consistently been able to put up points on even the best teams in college football, and they're still averaging 40 points per game this year. And they're up against an LSU defense, which is talented, but not statistically better than either of those previous college football playoff foes. So it's conceivable that this team could put up big points on LSU anything can happen. And when comparing these teams, one thing that can be used is common opponent, and they have one in Texas. Now, I want to get this out there because it's noteworthy, but I'm not sure how much value should be put into this. Because for one, this was a week two game for LSU, which is so early in the season that teams are still trying to figure themselves out. And it was a rivalry game for Oklahoma. And in rivalry games, you can typically throw statistics and records out the window. But still, LSU beat Texas 45 to 38, a seven point margin, and LSU gained 560 73 yards to Texas's 530 yards. And LSU is 13-0 on the year, while Oklahoma is 12-1. And this LSU team is the number one team in the country, Oklahoma is 
is fourth. And LSU has beaten four top 15 teams and Oklahoma has beaten three top 25 teams, but lost to one unranked team. Then looking at their rosters, starting with 24-7's roster composite, which ranks all schools' current rosters based on recruiting rankings, LSU is fifth, but Oklahoma is not too far behind at eighth, with a very close player average between them. So both teams, at least projected through recruiting, have similarly talented teams. But there's no debate based on NFL draft projections which team is more talented, as Oklahoma is predicted to have five players drafted with a max of six, and LSU is projected to have nine players drafted with a max of 12. Then when you look at Walter Camp All-Americans, LSU again has the edge, as they have four total All-Americans with three first team and one second team, compared to Oklahoma, who has two total All-Americans with one first team and one second team, which is in part why betting odds has LSU as a 14-point favorite to win the game, and why ESPN's FPI has given LSU a 29% chance to win it all, and Oklahoma only has a 9% chance. But in football, it's all about the matchups, and for Oklahoma, it all starts with Jalen Hurts and the run game versus LSU's front seven. And it's already been noted by others, but Ole Miss's offense has somewhat set a blueprint for how Oklahoma should attack LSU's defense. Obviously, Oklahoma is going to run their offense, but the run game is key. However, Ole Miss and Oklahoma do run the ball differently. Ole Miss is more of a speed and space run offense, as opposed to Oklahoma, who is a power run offense, although their players are also good in space. But LSU's run defense has been solid this year. It's not a weakness. They've only allowed, on average, 3.6 yards per carry which is 27th in the nation, and 120.3 yards per game, which is 24th. But Oklahoma's quarterback-running back duel could present problems for them, especially when factoring in that Lincoln Riley as an offensive play caller has proven to be better than LSU's Dave Arenda as a defensive play caller. Now, I'm not saying Arenda isn't good, but Lincoln Riley is one of those elite coaches on offense. But the problem is, if you keep the ball in Jalen Hurts' hands too long, there's more opportunities for him to fumble the ball. And he's had a big fumbling problem this year. Jalen Hurts as a playmaker has been fantastic, but his turnovers has also kept the other teams in games, as he has eight fumbles this year, with six of them for losses. And that along with Stevenson's suspension and Sermon's injury could really hinder the Sooners' run game, which is in part why Oklahoma can't simply run the ball. That along with the fact that LSU's defense has been pretty good this year, which is why Oklahoma will also have to have success moving the ball through the air. Leading to our next matchup, Oklahoma's wide receivers versus LSU's secondary. When it comes to the pass, game, LSU's offense tops the charts in almost every category. But there is one that Oklahoma has the edge in, and that's passing yards per completion. Oklahoma's fifth in the nation, averaging 16.01 yards per completion this season, while LSU's down at 25th with 13.85, because Oklahoma likes to stretch the defense. And they have some terrific receivers, but the headliner is C.D. Lamb, and he just may be the best receiver in the nation. He has 58 receptions, over 1,200 receiving yards, and 14 touchdowns and will likely be a top 10 pick in the upcoming NFL Draft. But LSU's secondary is considered one of the top candidates for the claim of DBU for a reason. You just know he's going to be playing on Sundays. But he is a freshman, and elite receivers have beaten him this year. And C.D. Lamb is just that, an elite receiver. But LSU knows that as well, which is why it will be up to Charleston Rambo, who is another very good receiver, along with the rest of the Sooners receiving core, to make big plays as well. And LSU's secondary, while very talented, hasn't played up to expectations this year, so this could be a very intriguing matchup. Then the final one is not quite a matchup, but it is something to look out for, and that's Oklahoma's kicker. I hate to potentially jinx him, but it's been said over and over again, he's been perfect all year. And while it may not be possible for kicks to win this game, you have to get your points whenever you can. And if he can make his kicks when the team needs them, that could be a big asset for this Oklahoma team. But on the LSU side of the ball, the big matchup is Oklahoma secondary versus LSU's wide receivers. Because we all want to see if Oklahoma's secondary can have any success slowing down these receivers. LSU has this year's Belitnikoff Award winner Jamar Chase, which is the award for the most outstanding receiver. But that's not all. I want to show you something. And this was his composite recruiting ranking coming out of high school. A three-star and the worst player in the class. Recruiting rankings are fantastic and are often right, but this just proves the point that they can also be wrong. But Oklahoma's pass defense is no slouch. And while LSU's pass offense is ranked number two in the nation, 
nation by yards with 386 yards per game. Oklahoma's past defense is ranked 24th and has only allowed on average 198.5 yards per game. And no, you won't see many household names in the secondary, but I will tell you, senior cornerback Pernell Motley is a good player and he's played great throughout most of this year. And they have really good players throughout this secondary and have recruited well as well. And the secondary also tends to shift late, which can confuse an offense. But still, this is going to be a scary matchup for them, especially with Joe Burrow throwing the ball. So if Oklahoma's defense wants to have any success they'll need their pass rush to step up as well, which leads to the matchup of Oklahoma's defensive line versus LSU's offensive line. In watching Oklahoma's defensive line, they like to use twists and stunts as a primary weapon to create the pass rush. It's something that defensive coordinator Alex Grinch brought with them this year. But with the suspension of Oklahoma sack leader Roddy Perkins, they're already up against it, and they're playing LSU, whose offensive line has just won the Joe Moore Award, which is given to the best offensive line. And the group play great as a unit, but they aren't flawed as they gave up on average 2.23 sacks per game, which is 77th in the nation. And Oklahoma averages 2.69 sacks per game, which is 30th. And with all the mobile quarterbacks in this year's college football playoff, from Fields to Lawrence to Hurts, no quarterback has matched their athleticism with telling him when to run and when to throw it. And blitzing him is almost a bad idea because it just means that someone's open and it's completion percentage this year. And that's Clyde Edwards Hilaire versus Oklahoma's front seven. Clyde Edwards Hilaire is a tough game-breaking running back. He's getting comparisons to both Darren Sproles and Mark Ingram in the media. And he's a do-it-all back and typically Joe Burrow's safety net in the passing game. Edwards Hilaire has 1,200 yards rushing this season and led the SEC in rushing touchdowns with 16. He's also averaged 6.5 yards per carry and has 50 receptions for 399 yards. And he's up against Oklahoma's front seven, which is led by Kenneth Murray, and he's the real deal. He leads the team in tackles with 98, tackles for loss with 16, has four sacks, which is third and one pick for the season. And he's not alone when it comes to top defensive players on the team. But Oklahoma's good, but not great at run defense. They're ranked 32nd, which is solid, averaging and allowed 4.02 yards per play. But with Edward Hilaire's injury, LSU doesn't have a proven backup. Although they do have a lot of talent behind them, they just haven't played in big games. But Curry, Davis Price, and Embry are all very talented players. But still, if Hilaire actually misses the game, he will be missed, and it could hamper their offense. But with that done, let's quickly go through position comparisons, starting with quarterback. No question, it's Joe Burrow. He's the Heisman winner, likely first overall pick, but Jalen Hurts is a great player as well. And the Heisman hangover is a real thing, and with Joe getting all this love and attention now, it may be hard for him to keep that edge, but still, advantage LSU. Running back, both teams have recruited well, especially LSU, but the backups have not gotten a lot of playing time in big games. But the suspension mentions that Oklahoma really hurt their running back depth. But just head to head, assuming Hilaire is healthy, I would take him over Brooks. Advantage, LSU. Wide receiver, CeeDee Lamb is great. Rambo solid, but the answer is LSU. Offensive line, LSU's offensive line just won the award for best offensive line, which is an award that Oklahoma's offensive line won last year. But Oklahoma's replacing a lot of players, and even though Creed is great, the answer is LSU. Defensive line, Oklahoma has NFL talent on their defensive line, LSU has more. Perkins is suspended, but even if if he wasn't, the answer is LSU. Linebacker. I believe that Oklahoma has the best individual talent in Murray, but LSU overall has better players. Just look at the draft projections. The answer is LSU. Secondary. As I've said before, LSU has a strong claim for DBU, just as strong as any school. And again, looking at draft projections, it's pretty clear LSU is more talented. But Oklahoma's secondary has only allowed 198 yards per game to LSU's 221.7. And specifically against Texas, they allowed Sam Ellinger to pass 400 yards on them. Oklahoma held them to just over 200. Now I know for a fact that LSU is more talented, but Oklahoma has played better. So even with Grant Delpit winning the Jim Thorpe Award this year, I don't know what LSU secondary is showing up. So controversially, given all those factors, I'm saying that this is a draw. Special teams. Really for me, the only significant difference is Oklahoma's kicker. So I'm giving them the edge. Coaching. This is another tough one. And let me break it down. First of all, Coach O is fantastic. 
fantastic. I thought USC was crazy for letting him go because I saw how those players reacted to him. The smartest thing LSU did was retain him as their head coach. Also, Joe Brady is an incredible assistant and he turned LSU's offense into a behemoth and him winning the assistant of the year award is well deserved. But on the flip side, Lincoln Riley is also one of the best offensive minds in football and Bob Stoops, one of Oklahoma's greatest coaches ever, stepped down because he trusted Lincoln Riley and Lincoln Riley is getting all this NFL attention for a reason. And in addition to that, Alex Drench really turned this defense around and that can't be ignored. So although I know LSU is the easy pick, given the awards that team received this year, again, controversially, I'm giving the coaching matchup a draw. And the last thing I'll say about this game is that no question, Oklahoma is and should be the underdog. But in the words of Nick Saban, LSU should not indulge in the rat poison because the games are played for a reason. And just using teams in this year's college football playoff, we've all seen heavy favorites lose big games like this before. Clemson, even though they weren't a heavy favorite, their blowout victory over Alabama last year was stunning to everyone. Ohio State's victory over Miami in 2003 also comes to mind, and Oklahoma's victory over Alabama in the Sugar Bowl comes to mind as well. The recruits, as I said before, use many different criteria when choosing a school, but bowl wins is one of them. And with the early signing period over, both teams are pretty set for the 2020 recruiting class. And I couldn't find any true battles between them anyway. But the 2021 class is a different story as Oklahoma currently sits at 13th with three commits and LSU currently sits at 28th and between the two schools they currently have 12 tough recruiting battles going on that could shift the futures of the programs and both programs really focus on the state of Texas. It's a hotbed of talent and one in proximity that's very close to both programs. But that's a wrap for my LSU Oklahoma preview. Sorry it took so long to get out but I hope you enjoyed it. If you haven't seen my Ohio State Clemson preview be sure to check that one out and feel free to dabble around and you might find one or two videos that'll blow your mind but that's the end of this video thanks for watching and i'll check you out later on you must be out your mind peace out